Hey, Popeye, are the latest. Good morning, Popeye. Grandma watch Popeye's every morning and every night. Greetings, greetings viewers and subscribers. In today's journey, we are going to be starting at White House and we are heading towards Savannah Lamar, both in the parish of Westmoreland. Sit back, relax and drive with me. Now, today is Emancipation Day. Today in Jamaica is a public holiday. For those who didn't know, on August 1, 1838, some 184 years ago, in that time, Jamaica was still a British Caribbean territory. On that day, thousands of ex-slaves who had gathered at town centers and churches across Jamaica, they broke out into joyous celebrations after hearing the final words of Emancipation Declaration, affirming their full freedom from slavery. Now, whenever I hear that word, emancipation, you know, I am reminded of the words written by Marcus Garvey, our first national hero, and made popular by Robert Nesta Marley, popularly known as Bob Marley. It says, Emancipate yourself from mental slavery. None but ourselves can free our mind. So, what is mental slavery? Mental slavery is the inability to view events or one's self objectively. A mental slave will not apply his or her brain to evaluate what he or she is being told to discover what is true and rational. Mental slaves are in the habit of accepting and believing what is told to them, whether it makes sense or it not make no sense. But my question to you is this. My question to you is this. Is Jamaica truly emancipated? We are no longer slaves and a plantation, but are we free to go out and have fun like we would want to? Are we free to go to a prayer meeting tonight and walk back home? The question is, are we truly emancipated? The comment section is yours. Say your piece. Now, on to today's news. On Monday, July 4th, 2022, we carried a story. It was about a then 13-year-old boy, now 17 years old. He had sexually assaulted a 9-year-old girl named Khadija. He then killed her. The incident, it took place at a district named Bronte in the parish of Westmoreland. That 17-year-old, his name is Timoy Saman, and he had pleaded not guilty. The case was tried in the Westmoreland Circuit Court. It was almost a two weeks long trial, and the matter, it was prosecuted by the DPP herself, Miss Paula Llewellyn. On Friday, July 1, 2022, the jury retired for almost three hours, and they returned with a verdict of guilty. The matter was put off for sentencing Thursday, July 28, 2022. Now, when the matter was called up on Thursday, we are learning that a psychiatric evaluation was requested by the lawyers representing Timoy. As a result, sentencing was again postponed. Timoy Saman, the young killer, the young raper bull, the young sprat, he will be sentenced next month in the Home Circuit Court in Kingston. So you are wondering, why did I call Timoy a young sprat? You figure it out yet? Yes, man, this little piece of nastiness. Him didn't only assault this young princess front way. He also assaulted her back way too. Are you picking up? Stay tuned because we are watching and we'll be telling you what sentence the court passed on this little piece of nastiness. Stand by. So on Friday, we told you that we had received information that a man, popularly known as Blue, he was shot and killed by the police and we had promised to get some additional information and update the story. So here goes. On the early morning of Friday, July 29th, 2022, about some minutes to 2 o'clock, a team of police officers, they were out on mobile patrol when they received information that a burglary was in progress at a house. This incident was being taken place at, well, you know what? 
I'm not going to call the name of the area, so I'm going to leave out the name for now. But that area is in the parish of St. James. A lady, she reported that a man was trying to break into her house. The police, they went to the house where they saw and spoke to the lady who had called the police. She told the police that a man, only known to her as Blue, came to her house and tried to break into it. She said that when she got up and realized what was happening, Blue threatened to burn down the house and kill her if she didn't open the house. It is said that Blue, he damaged three windows on the house whilst trying to break into it. When the police reached, Blue was not seen. The police, they carried this lady to the Mount Salem police station so she could give a statement. But on arrival at the station, there was Blue at the station, cussing and making a lot of noise. The lady, she pointed out Blue and told the police that he was the same man who was trying to break into her house and threatened to kill her. It is said that I know Blue started cuss. He threatened to kill the lady as also the police officers at the station. A police officer then tried to apprehend Blue, but he got away and ran out of the station. Two police officers chased him and we are told that when they caught up with him, Blue, he armed himself with some rock stones. The police officers, they instructed him to drop the stones. But what Blue did next means he wanted to go home to his maker. He started to fling off at the police them. We are told that Blue, he was shot once by one of the police officers. It wasn't a fatal bullet. Blue, he never stopped. He picked up some more stones and attempted to fling at the police again. He was shot one more time and this time it was game over. That was a fatal bullet. Now, <laughs> I know that some of you, you're going to say, but the police never have to kill him. Let me tell you something. Stone can kill people. Some of you are also going to say, the police could have shot him in his foot or in hand. Well, he was shot once in his foot and that never stopped him. Some of you are also going to say, the police never have to run after him when he run out of the station. Them could have make him go on. Eh? I got some of you going to say, right? But let me tell you something. If the police did make Blue go on, and then him go back go kill the lady or someone else, only the same one would be cussing the police. Not true. Same so it go. Now, Blue, he wanted to die, and he ended up dying. I'm calling him Blue because up to the time of voicing this video, we hadn't gotten his correct name or his bio data. If and when we do, we will be updating the story. In the meantime, in the come, they are probing this matter. So let me ask you something from now. Let me ask you something. Have you hit on the like button as yet? If you have not yet, hit on the like button. Remember to hit on it. If you are over here watching our videos and you have not yet subscribed to the channel, remember, hit on the subscribe button as also hit on the notification bell, then click all. So that whenever we drop a new video, you will be the first to be notified. And for those inquiring about the birthday segment, it's coming up. We are trying to sort out a few issues. Yeah man, we'll soon be starting up at the birthday greetings segment. Now, these two incidents, we are not sure if they are related. We are doing some digging and we'll be updating the story as soon as we get additional information. The first incident, it took place at a place named Barbican in the Sandy Bay area in the parish of Hanover. It took place early this morning, Monday, August 1, 2022, about 2.30. We are learning that that man that you are seeing on your screen, his name is Omar Michael McDonald, but he was popularly known as Champy. Champy, he was 29 years old and he lived at the same area, Barbican in Sandy Bay. What we are learning is that Champy, he was at his home. He was in his room, fast asleep, when hoodlums came to his house and kicked off the door to his room. The hoodlums, they entered the house and opened a barrage of bullets at Champy, shooting Champy at least 
15 times, Champy received gunshot wounds all over his body. From all indication, Champy, he died on the spot. The police were informed and we are told that when they processed this crime scene, 16 9mm pen shells were recovered from the scene. Now, less than one hour later, Monday, August 1, 2022, about some minutes after 3 o'clock, at an area known as Punkin Bottom, also in the same Sandy Bay area and near to where the first incident took place. That lady on your screen, her name is Venetia Origio, but she was popularly known as Lisa Goodas. Lisa Goodas, she is 36 years old and she operated a shop at Punkin Bottom. A man, his name is Nigel Wilmot, but he's popularly known as Elder. He's said to be about 30 years old and he's from a neighboring community named Magan Drive. Now, Magan Drive, it is popularly known as Bronx Lane in the same Sandy Bay area. We are learning that Elder and Lisa Goodas, they were fast asleep at Lisa Goodas' home at Pumpkin Bottom when they were awoken by knocking on the front door. Lisa, we are told, she asked, who is it? A man, he answered from the outside. Police, open the door. We are learning that Lisa, believing that the persons outside were police officers, she got up and opened the door and that was it. Hoodlums entered the house and they peppered both Elder and Lisa with bullets all over their bodies. From all indication, both Elder and Lisa Goodas, they died on the spot. The police were informed and we are told that when they processed this crime scene, nine 9mm pen shells were recovered from the scene. Like we said, we are digging to see if there is any connection with these two incidents. And if and when we get that information, we will certainly be updating this story. In the meantime, the mayhem continues. Blessed love everybody. Tell a friend, for tell a friend, for tell a friend about Popeye News Link and PNL Blog TV. Like, subscribe, and share. Quick Silver Sin, if we just unite, what a country this will be. If we just unite, Jamaica live in unity. If we just unite, what a country this will be. If we just unite, Jamaica. Show 